G'day. So you've stumbled upon a skeleton spawner in your survival world and you're thinking, huh, I really want to set up a skeleton XP farm. Well, today I'm going to show you how. First things first, obviously run in, light it up like a Christmas tree by placing torches all the way around your skeleton spawner. And then go ahead and loot all the goodies out of the chest. Now that you have lit up your spawner, it will try to pre prevent any future skeletons from spawning. But unfortunately, while you're digging out the room, you'll probably have a few spawns. So there's really nothing you can do about it. It is survival mode and it's a little bit of a challenge, but you will get there. Now for the people that are, you know, fed up with the, the spawns, you can actually turn your world into peaceful mode while you build this. By pressing escape, options, and turning your difficulty to peaceful, this will pretty much turn off any mob spawns in your world and allow you to pretty much peacefully construct your mob farm. Now, unfortunately, some friends or other people may consider this as cheating. So yeah, today we're obviously gonna be just building it in normal mode. That's just another option for, uh, you know, for the for the brand new players of Minecraft. You know, if you can't do it while the skeletons are spawning and they're a bit of pain in the bum, no problem, stick it on peaceful. Okay, it's time to start building. So now you want to dig out a 9x9 nine nine cube pretty much around your mo your skeleton spawner. And it's pretty easy to keep track of how you do this by pretty much measuring from the spawner. So you pretty much got to have a 4 gap in each direction. So up, down, everything. That will make a 9x9 nine nine cube. So example, we'll remove this torch here. Be careful not to break your spawner. 1, 2, 3, and there's the fourth block there so you do this all the way around the room even up and even down see and we've got to dig out the roof as well so that that's how you make a nine by nine cube so that way that way and that way let's get that done okay i've gone ahead and dug out a nine by nine room now you can go ahead and decorate the walls if you want to with whatever block you want or you can leave it stock like this this is just stock uh, this is pretty much the way the environment is. I'm going to go ahead and decorate mine with stone brick. Now, as you can see, skeletons are spawning. So you may want to put a couple of torches on the bottom of the floor. Alrighty, I have chosen to decorate my room with stone brick and orange concrete. Now, we're going to need, obviously, a observation slash killing room where we kill our skeletons and gather their XP and loot in the future. So let's go ahead and construct that now. I've chosen this wall. It doesn't really matter what direction you choose. It, it's totally up to you. But I've chosen this wall and I'm going to dig in about six blocks. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So I'm going to dig that back by six and I'm probably going to take it up by another couple, but I'm going to clear this entire thing out all the way along. Nice big square, six blocks in. Okay, so that's the future observation slash killing room. There will eventually be glass here to protect us from the other side. And may I suggest building the observation slash killing room on the side that you come in from. So just pretend we come in from a mine shaft on this side. It's probably best to to make the observation room on that side or you know same thing if you came from the surface you'll want to build it on the same side so you got ease of access and don't have to walk around the entire farm now as you can see i've also decorated just remember none of these blocks here like stone and the concrete do not affect the farm at all they're just my decoration blocks you can leave it literally Vanilla, like stock standard, especially if you're brand new world and you're trying to get a farm up and going fast, you don't need all the decorations that I'm putting in. That's just a heads up there. Now, also, I must stress that all these torches in here, once we have built, will be removed. And this will obviously allow the spawner to be active. And uh, so right now, they're just a placeholder. They're just staying there. We'll remove all the torches inside this cube here. And that will make a nice dark room. Now, you don't have to move the torches on this back wall because I've designed the I've designed this back wall to be that far away from the spawner it will not affect the spawner at all 
So, pretty much, we're going to be putting glass blocks in here, along here, to protect ourselves eventually. And it is pretty much a gap of one, two, three, four, five against the wall. And all the light, the light level hits seven on the glass, and then six where mobs will actually start to spawn on the other side. So, anything in this range here, all these torches will prevent any mobs from spawning. Because remember... Once we remove all those torches, that you know, it's going to be quite dark down here, not, not lit up like a Christmas tree anymore. So we want some torches only in the observation area. Okay, alright, let's move on to the next step. Okay, it's now time to build the killing station in the observation room. So we're going to come over to the centre of our observation room here. And what we're going to do is come to the centre torch here. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to make a slit in the wall because this is where the skeletons are going to drop down. Um, obviously, I want somewhere for the loot to go. So I'm going to put a chest in sideways. It is a it's a nice center bit here. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to count 23 blocks straight up because this is where the skeletons are going to drop on. So we want them to take fall damage. Now, why do we want them to take fall damage? Because we want to one shot hit them. We want them, we want to punch them in survival and they will just drop dead and give us their loot and XP and all that good stuff. So we need them to drop 23 blocks exactly onto a hopper so we're going to still count this block here so from the chest upwards 23 okay here we go it might get a bit dark but here we go so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one 22 23 get out torch so we can see what's going on that's a 23 block drop that should leave the skeleton with half a heart that is fantastic now we're going to go two extra because this is the drop so we need to go two extra for the water canal and we'll talk about that in a second so one two okay and the water canal is going to be going obviously over our spawner which is in this direction so we're going to mark it that way Alright, so skeletons come over and they'll fall their 23 blocks down. They will uh, actually be hitting a hopper, but which will not count. Okay, okay, that is absolute perfect. Obviously, we're going to uh, close this in very soon, but for now, we'll just leave it be. Okay, we're going to leave it alone. Let's go on to the next stage. So the next stage is literally connecting our drop shoot uh, killing station here with the actual floor. So, how we're going to do that is... In the future, we won't do it yet because we're trying to prevent those spawns from happening. But these torches here are going to, we're going to dump a bucket of water on them. And pretty much what's going to happen is all the water is going to flow to a center point here. And this center point is going to be an air block. It's going to be nice. The water's exactly going to come to the edge here, but not flow over. That's how you've got a perfect 9x9 nine nine room. Okay, so from there, we want to take them from here over there. So what we're going to do is obviously take them up and over yep up and over and then they're going to drop those 23 blocks down so you can one shot them with your fist and get that nice xp and loot so let's go ahead and get them connected so we're going to start down here i'm going to bring my i'm going to go down by three blocks well including the top block here i'm going to go to the side of our nine by nine cube okay so let's go in i'm going to put some torches down so you guys can see now, for me, it's quite easy. I know the edge of my 9x9 cube due to my decorations. See, I'm at the edge right now. I'm going to cut a block, couple of blocks up. See, there you go. That's literally the edge of my 9x9 decoration perfectly in the center. Okay. Now, you're wondering, okay, how, to, how the bloomin' hell are you going to get the, that connected up with over there? Well, that's quite simple. All we have to do is count the... the, the, the the diameter of the entire room that's all we have to do like from end to end here and then cut across the top and straight down should be relatively easy so this here is a nine by nine so nine long plus we put an extra six going in right so nine plus six is 15 now you've got to also plus the wall so this wall here is 16 then you've got to plus this wall over here which is also 17 but remember there's an air block behind it so that's 18 we've got to cut out 
okay? See, relatively quite easy. Now your room might differ, obviously, from size, and then you just measure it and add the walls, etc. But mine, perfect, 18 from hole to hole. So let's go ahead, go right up our uh, kill shoot here, and we're gonna, we're including these blocks, we're gonna count. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna put a torch down so we can see. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm going to put another torch down so we can see. So we've gone 18 over. So now all we have to do is go straight down and we should be connected. So let's dig straight down. And I can see, oh, I'm going to put a torch down. But I've see I've hit the edge of our 9x9 cube and our orange decoration. Ta-da! There we go. It's now connected right around. We can now literally trace the path where these skellies are going to go. They're going to drop in some water, go in here. They're going to go zoom all the way up here. And then they're going to go along here. And they're going to pretty much drop down and take a huge amount of fall damage. Pow! And you're going to one-shot them. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. Well, it's the water canals next. Okay, now it's time to start setting up these water canals. All right, so then we might get a couple of spawns here because we're just about to dump water in here. So as I said, dump the water on the torch block here, over here, over here, and over here, all four corners. And what that's going to create this perfect, nice sink effect, washing everything into the middle. Let's hopefully don't get any spawns. And then what we're going to do is dump a bucket of water down here, right where we're standing. And that's going to push them along right to the edge. Perfect. Then what we want to do is we want to, we want, we want, what we want to do is make this an air block. So let's go ahead and put two signs in here. Okay. Sign here, sign here. All right. That's going to stop that. So it's got two air blocks technically, but... Now what we want to do is we want to create ourselves a bubble elevator. Now you can just pour a bucket of water right up the top and the, the skeletons will slowly, you know, hit the surface. But it's just painstaking, painstakingly slow things to surface. Like things to float is just, it takes a while. Um, so what, whoa, whoa, we're on fire. What the flame and galah? Okay, there must be lava nearby. Signs don't really burn, and that that's okay. That's all right. That's, so with lava is definitely nearby. The signs are not going to burn. Relax. And plus, we're going to have water in here very shortly. So now we're going to create that water elevator I was talking about. Bubble water elevator. Now, to make a bubble el water elevator is usually quite easy. So, you got to have source water. What I mean about source water, if you pour a bucket of water on this top block here, it's going to drop down one block, right? That top block is a source. The bottom is running water, as, it, is it, as it's called. Okay? So, we need source water on every single block. So now, obviously, you're not going to run back and forwards and place bucket, 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 all the way up the top. What you want to do is an old-fashioned trick. You're going to go right up the top here. Okay? You're going to go right up the top, and you're going to pour a bucket of water here, which is going to spread water over the top, but also spread water down. So, place your water in. Boom. See what I mean? It's spread water over the top. And also the water is now gushing down to our signs, which will put out the water. Uh, put out the fire, sorry. So then we're going to go back down to our signs. Yep, all the way down. See how slow you would go. Look, look. Look how slow you would float up. Ready? This is how slow you're floating up. Yep, horrible. You need it to be a bubble elevator. Absolutely horrible. So what you want to do is grab yourself some kelp. All right. Now, you're probably, okay, what, what the flaming glass to deal with the kelp? Well, the kelp is going to help us uh, turn them all into sauce. Because every time a kelp grows, it uh, pretty much every block it grows into turns that water, water into a water source. Ah, how perfect is that? So that's become a water source. Now that's become a water source. We want 23 of them, obviously, because it's... Oh, I think it's a little higher than 23, but hey. So just keep going up. It's turning them all into sources. Because if you don't do this, then the soul sand won't work. They won't create the bubble elevator. The bubble elevator needs pure water sources all the way up. And then, look, we can't go any higher. Now you can actually swim back down 
and break the bottom one because now they're all water sources. So break that bottom one. There we go. All gone. You can go get that back if you want. And grab yourself some soul sand. Yes. Good old soul sand. Break the bottom block here and replace it with your soul sand. Check the bubbles out. Yep. Bubble elevator is now working. Let's step into the bubble elevator. Woohoo! Your skeletons are going to go flying up, which is fantastic. There's your bubble elevator right there. Complete. Done and dusted. Now, you probably got a question. So come down here. You're probably like, but Data, what? Whoa, I'm trying to go down here. Even in creative mode, it's quite difficult. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, what about this section here? So skeleton, so what actually is going to happen is the skeleton's going to land in this section and another skeleton will actually push a skeleton in here. So it relies on skeletons pushing each other in eventually. Okay, you cannot break this sign. I'll show you what happens when you break the sign. Oh, it pushes you backwards. It's no go. So you've got to have that sign there breaking these two waters up. Okay, so some people have uh, packed ice here to allow sometimes they can slide over. You know, there's multiple ways you can help a bit. Having a skeleton, like four or five skeletons will spawn at a time and they'll push each other into the canal no problem. So up they go, up they go, and out they go. Now they're on top. Now, as you can see, oh, oh no, the water is not going to make it. Well, let's put an extender in. Now, an extender is quite easy. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to come back a couple of blocks because water actually gets uh, less strong as it gets weaker. See how slow we're moving? Look how slow we're moving. So what I'm going to do is going to come a couple blocks back, place a, a literally a slab in here. I'm going to go up by one and across by one and place a sign. So it's technically one back and up. So there you go. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Excellent. So I'm going to take now a bucket of water and I place it here next to the sign. It's going to, what's going to happen? Oh, oh, well, we also actually need to dig out. Oh, sorry about that. We also need to dig out another layer up top. Since we're extending the water, you need to be able to walk over this slab here. So just go ahead and cut another way, which makes it three high, by the way. So again, we're going to place a bucket here. What that's going to do now is connect together. So that's a, a water extender. You can use this for anything, guys. It's fantastic. Look at that. So what actually happens is the sign blocks the water from coming backwards, but the slab here, it connects everything together. So this connects to that. It's bloody brilliant. So now the skeletons will come up and will float along and the current's nice and strong. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So as it gets weaker, or well, what we want to do so the water doesn't flow down the, the tube here, I'm going to place a sign there because that counts as a taken block. All right, so a couple back. You could, by the way, guys, you don't even need to do a couple back. You can actually do it here if you really wanted to, but I just like the water canal to be extra strong, if you know what I mean. So again, one, sign one back, and the water placed in there. All right, nicely connected. Now, guys, okay, there might be a question. What happens if you were digging straight up and you hit the surface? That's no problem. Just encase it. As long as the sunlight doesn't cook your skeletons, that's fine. So you could do the same thing along the surface block on top, okay? So to keep that in mind. Same thing on the surface. Surface underground, doesn't matter where you put this. As long as there's a, a, you're blocking the sunlight out from hitting your poor old skeletons from cooking, because you kind of want to kill them. So there we go. That's all connected. We've got a nice water canal flowing down here. They're going to come down here. What I'm going to do is prevent them from... Um, prevent them from jumping i'm gonna put a block back there that's going to prevent them from jumping and they're going to go well how cool is that so that the water canals are now done okay so now the water canals are now done we're moving back to the killing station and adding the final touches so let's go ahead place your, place a hopper on top of the chest and what we're going to do now is cl close it in there we go. Bring it down so there's a one gap. So you cannot get seen by any nasties. It looks like sort of like a chimney. And you could even take stairs. So grab some stairs here real quick. And you can put stairs on next to this hopper. Okay? And then break that block. So you still got access to the chest underneath, but it looks much neater. Now, remember, guys, do not put a full-blown block on top. 
It will not allow you to open the chest or suck up the loot. The hopper will not allow the anything to work. So you need of a, uh, either a slab or stairs. That will do the trick. Even upside down stairs like that. That still works. If you really want to do upside down stairs, see, look at that. That still works. You can even close it. Ah, that looks nice. That probably does look a lot nicer. So there we go. We're ready to go. We are literally ready to go. So all we need now is a bit of glass. Yep, that's right. Fill in the glass here. Okay, glass is now filled in. I'll put a little decoration piece in. Sort of center, you know, break up the glass a little bit. You don't have to do that. It could just be full glass blocks. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the torches. That's right. Make sure that there is no leftover torches down here, you know, where we were in. So make sure it's nice and dark. Just make sure this entire 9x9 nine nine area is nice and dark. So let's, it's going to get hectic in here. Oh, before we remove the torch, probably a good idea to go ahead and place some glass blocks on top. What this will do is prevent mobs from spawning. I think even a half slab will do the trick. But that will prevent mobs from spawning on top and getting stuck and breaking the spawner. So let's go ahead and break all these torches and let's get some of these skellies spawning. You might need to grab your gum nuts in if you're in survival. Whoa, straight away we got one spawning. Perfect. Now come out of the room. And just let them start to spawn. Okay? Go ahead. Now remember, do not stand more than 16 blocks away. Or else a spawner will be deactivated. Alright? So it is actually spawning quite nicely. Nice and dark. Nice and light down here. You can even take the torch back, back by one block. But remember, this block will eventually become a 7. So things can start spawning here. And you don't want that. Especially if you're AFKing for loot. You know? You're AFKing, make sure they build up. But... Uh, yeah, so my recommendation is obviously just, oh, it's still, wow, there's three of them there. So they should be almost here. It does take a little bit for them to go over the water canal up the top, but they should be, they should be coming down any second. Well, the first lot, well, did you see how fast that was? Another set of three. Is it three and three? That's fantastic. It means it's running nicely. Don't worry if they get stuck in the middle because they'll sort themselves out. Well, there's one. Ha <laughs> ha. So now they're doing the whole loop around. It's just taken a little bit to warm up. There you go. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Ha <laughs> ha. Bloody brilliant, guys. So they're ready to go. You're ready to kill them. Okay. Oh, another one. Another one. See? She's up and running. So you can go ahead and just punch them. I'll even put myself in survival right now. So game mode uh, survival. And, you know, just we'll, we'll punch them. Look, I'll throw down the glass block and I'll punch them. Oh, look, one shot. Oh, oh no. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Thank you for all your stuff. <laughs> How flaming easy is that? And look, loot has got flowing into the chest already. Boom, they're one shot. Now, it looks like, see this this, this guy here's getting stuck. You can maybe put a carpet over the top. Maybe that will do the trick, no problem. Or probably because the original design here uh, does usually did not have the sides here, so you can get your XP, see? But blobs, your uncle, how brilliant is that? How brilliant is that? See, it's spawning them. It's The light is not affecting him in here. It's, it's going like a... It's just going like a bat out of hell. Nice and quick. Nice and quick. Nice, small, lovely looking farm. Okay. So just remember, guys, the later versions of Minecraft do have rules uh, when it comes to cramming entities in one block i think is maximum of 20 then the game will automatically kill one at a time so once it hits 20 entities in that one block the game will automatically start to kill them so just say oh but data i want a bit more than 20 entities before i kill them all no problem come on the side here remove that and remove that so what that's going to do now is separate. So every time a skeleton falls in, see, he'll be able to move to the side. And same thing, they split, they pretty much split apart. So that means you could probably have up to about 60 entities in this entire three blocks without having any problems and still being able to one-shot them. Now, if you're having any problems with um, um, them shooting you, put half slabs across the top here. That's how simple that is. But some people just like, some people just like to have literally just the single unit here and that's fine too but if you want more than 20 you break those blocks on the side you can just you can extend the whole thing sideways if you want and even put the hop put more hoppers facing into each other it'll work just like a treat 
But there you go. That is a very simple way to build yourself a, a Skelly XP spawner here. You one, one punch them. It's really handy to have early on in, in, in early game, early days in the game. And you can even expand it if you want. I'll show you what I mean. And with a little bit more work, you can carve out a very nice little place for yourself down here. Look at this. So the skeletons are now built up to 20, and uh, you can hear them, they're actually dying right now, automatically being killed, and their loot's automatically going down into the chest. So you can, you know, punch them yourself if you want to. Uh, or, you know, just let them, you know, die. But there you go, look at that, brilliant. Come back here, you've got a little storage unit to store everything. You've got a lava pit to throw stuff that you don't want anymore. How brilliant is this? See, a little bit more work and you can really turn it nice down here. Really turn it nice. Okay, guys, hopefully this tutorial has helped you build yourself a skeleton farm of your very own. So, guys, if, you've, if this has helped you, make sure you smash that button, leave a like, share on your favorite social media, comment below, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button with the bell notifications turned on. It'll be much appreciated. One last thing, you're probably wanting to see this thing in a sideways format in spectator mode. No problem. Let's do that real quick. Just for the people just to sort of get like a sideways view on what we had to build with here. There you go. Look at that. So we've got the bubble elevator going up. Look at that. It's working brilliantly. And they drop down into a little pit here. But there we go. That's where it's built. It's nice. Yeah, it's very simple indeed. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all later.